And welcome to Action Dined Industries. My name is Matt, and today I am joined with Wizard, The Rob, and Sean. And we are going to be talking about a hey. an Oculus Quest 2 VR video game called... Hit it, Sean. It's Walkabout Mini Golf is what it is. Oh, no. Nice. Oh, that was a terrible Australian accent. <laughs> Uh, you think you can do this stupid accent? Just shut up. Wow. Hey. Hey. Enough over it. We're going to have words later, bro. Hey, that was that was rude, dude. All right. Rob, uh, hit him. Yeah, so anyway. <laughs> Walkabout Mini Golf. Uh, and we are using the Rob rating system. Yep. He's uh, a cool little dude. To cover to cover this and again if if you didn't see our introduction on the the rob rating system yeah go back and watch that at some point you should the the rob you know he's pretty susceptible to motion sickness he's kind of new to all this and we just kind of threw him in and we're just kind of observing what happens to him so we're using that to report to you uh what's involved with some of these games highlight kind of hoping he'd take a shower too yeah, well one can only wish. We're hoping to highlight yeah. some of the motion sickness issues that some VR games have. So people that are new to uh, VR, uh, that are curious and want to know more, get a little bit more information about that. So we are going to first on this game, we are going to talk about safety. And overall assessment right away, this game... Walkabout Mini Golf on the Oculus Quest 2 has a wall punch risk of zero. Zero. You can play this game sitting down. Um, Standing up, moving yeah, around. Yeah, you don't even, you can do one controller, and we're going to go over that at some yeah. point here. Pretty basic. Um, it's good fun, too. Rotation settings. So when you're, when you're, uh, turning and looking around what we're getting is uh this game only has snap rotation yeah i think so, it does i'm trying to it, remember i think i mean does, you can kind of if no you're standing smooth. still and like you turn in place it'll move but you can turn you your head joysticks but what joystick movement is just snap rotation so there's no like yep. smooth uh, uh rotation so this is so th what uh, what this is meaning, uh, those of you that are a little more susceptible to um, motion sickness, uh, this is Get good for you. Over the tummy. This game is rated comfortable. We'll put it that way. And I would yeah, there's a, there's is a good agree. comfort rating right there. Ours is as well. I think there's a I think this is actually a pretty good one for the snap rotation because it doesn't have that you know weird fluid movement. It's just bang you're right in the next spot so here's what it looks like the snap rotation now movement is the other thing where people can have some issues possible comfort issues yeah now this game relies strictly on free teleport there's no free movement you can't walk around with the joystick you're pointing at a spot on the ground where you want to go and when when you when you activate it, you end up there, like in, that, in, instantaneously, which for some reason the brain just makes more sense of. It, it kind of works better with that, it, yeah. It does. It's that's So that, that helps with this game's overall comfort level uh, if you might be worried about the, the motion sickness thing. Um, the teleport beam in this one also looks like a stream of pee. I'm just Thing. Yes, it does. <laughs> it really does. Oh my gosh! It, it looks it like it does. Just... So, so close. when when you're doing it, it you you can barely hear me laughing there about it. But now you can't yes, stop sir. doing it, right? Yeah. It just looks like a giant stream. Of uh, it does. It does. But basically, you let go and it. You end up appearing, you know, 
where where that spot on the that ground little is. circle right is right there yeah some games have a peculiarly high arc and i think that's worth noting here in uh, uh yeah especially because i think we used it a few times when we were playing oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> Um, as far as user interface goes, um, I, th I think for anyone with, uh, some ADHD can't pay attention. I've, I myself found myself wandering off and exploring and hopefully we'll cover that later. I'm going to say hopefully, cause I can't Yeah, I think we will. Cause I think it, it's. And I think it's something that you need to do in this game anyway, because there's a few options in there that you can kind of move around. And there's more than one, like we only, we're only showing like one, uh, one of the courses here, but there's yes. four other courses besides this one. And each one on each individual hole, there's a lost ball. You need to go find that lost ball so you can increase your oh, uh, yes. collection of lost balls. Oh, yes. And we, and, and we will cover that. Yeah. We, uh, we actually uh, will witness the uncovering of one of the lost balls. When it's your turn, it dings. It makes this, like, ding sound. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, you know, your turn is right in the middle. I still managed to miss that. I was so intrigued walking around and exploring. Just, to, just this level is a castle. There's other levels that are completely different from this. This is yeah. There's a there's an Arizona like modern kind of looking one. There's a, uh, a an Asian looking uh, courts as well. Uh, I'm trying to think, there's another one that's uh, kind of like a, a lost treasure uh, pirate theme kind of one. I think there's another one as well. I don't remember what it is, but you know, then and definitely this one. This one's the castle. It's really fun. This this one does look um, like it's newer. It's got a, a little more polished. Yeah, uh, look definitely to has it. some polish to it. And it's super rad. And I uh, I actually haven't tried. Each level has like a nighttime mode version of it where it's well, darker. That, that's out, the hard mode. Lit, but there's extra obstacles and things are. It's a little harder. Yeah. And I haven't I've, tried. I've the played hard all of those obviously. options, and whew, some of them are some of them are tough. <laughs> I mean, I can play this. I I really enjoy this game. I play this game pretty often, even though I can just play, you know, on my lonesome here. And those uh, those harder versions really do challenge you. And, and this one is good for multiplayer and single player, and we that is something Definitely. That we, we will get to. Mm -hmm. um, but talking about the user interface, how you interact with the game when you first get into it, you're going to see. Uh, you can see up above. You got the the levels that you can pick. And they show you the controls right there, so you right away you're learning how like what do the controllers do. I like that. We're I like that option really well. As soon as you get in, that was a clever thing that they did, printing it on the yep. uh, on that right there thing. in front of you. As soon as you walk in, like you you get through all of the the basic, you know, hey, the, you know, this company made this and this company did that. You walk right up, bang, it's right in front of your face. You know what you're going to be doing. Yeah, and you can see here I'm choosing a ball. And that's that's pretty much how it's done. These are all the balls that I found. Every course, every hole, there's a ball uh, in the daytime and then in the nighttime mode. So there's quite a few balls that you can find. So it's kind of a I side activity. Don't think I've found any. I think they're just in the uh, the regular oh. normal modes. I haven't seen any of the ones in the hard modes oh. in the nighttime modes. Apologies for the fake information. What? What? Dude, Rob, why didn't you tell him, that bro? Was, that was that was uh, I guess based on purely on speculation. Um, but this we got to is... go play some of them hard modes too, bro. Those are tough. Oh, I mean, I I I played the the nighttime one of the night two of the nighttime modes, and they are they are definitely uh, a bit more challenging. Very much. Um, but this this game, I what I liked was you can play standing up. I played it kind of sitting on a spinning bar stool, which was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, it doesn't take a lot of room, and it's generally no. a more relaxed game. This is definitely something like you could do like late at night with some friends. Um, it's not gonna you you're not exerting a lot of a ton of energy. No, other it's than definitely something that you can just yourself up, stand in place, kind of, and you know, 
look down like you're actually putting and use your controller and swing and you're not using a whole lot of room in between where the edge of your guardian is to the other edge of your guardian. Yeah. I, I, you know, probably more work than you would be doing with like a PlayStation or Xbox, but not a tiny bit more, not as much as most uh, VR games. This one is pretty chill. Um, for user interface, uh, the multiplayer menu was pretty straightforward right away. You, and you can, uh, here we can, we clicked on private game. Eventually, yep. It's connecting. You type in the name. And here's the thing, and this is very important. There's no party chat right now while you're uh, going type- through all of the, putting the names in them. Yeah. Stuff. So right here, someone is making a game like a multiplayer match and they have to type in the name so before you go into multiplayer you are going to want to discuss with your friends what the name of the room is going to be because once you get in the game and you go into multiplayer party chat went away for us shut down zero so you won't be able to have that conversation you couldn't hear anybody nothing like rob tried talking we didn't even hear his flies buzzing nothing that's right. What like what's you know what's the name of the room? How do I get in? So yeah. uh, sort that out beforehand. Get a get a party chat going with you with your friends. So that is one thing. Some of the games on the quest have this this issue where the the party chat uh, seems to interfere with the game itself. Yeah, it kind of disappears for some reason at certain points, and sometimes it comes back. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's glitchy, and hopefully we can report that to you. But this one, it, it only seemed to happen when we were kind of connecting into the 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 room itself. Yes, yes. It shut down for a moment, and then once we got into the room and it was just the, the group of us, then the party chat came back and we could all interact with each other. Yeah, once we got into uh, the game, it's just at this main menu for whatever reason we... Even though we were in a, a party um, outside of the game before we even started the game, we could we had a you know talking to each other. Uh, I don't know what's going on under the hood that causes it. No, Rob, you can't have any of my drink, bro. But be aware of it. So next up, uh, one thing I thought was pretty cool, and some games have this: the wrist scoreboard. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, it t- like with this one, and especially uh, each individual game has the same thing. You kind of rotate your wrist in real life, and you'll see on your wrist, it'll tell you what hole you're on. It'll give you the number of strokes, and it'll tell you what par is for that individual hole. And how bad you're doing. Or how well you're doing. Uh, settings is pretty minimal, I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because some games will give you the snap rotation, like we talked about, the teleporting, yeah. but some of them will have extra stuff if you want to be brave and venture on more into the uncomfortable area of, of movement. But this doesn't really, they don't really let you do that. You are pretty much stuck with the snap rotation, the, um, you know, the teleport movement. There's just some uh, real basic settings that you can that you can do with this one. And I kind of like just having those basic settings. You don't have to play with it too much. You can kind of get your, 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 your putter setting right there at the top. You see, um, and it doesn't matter how much you actually play with it. You're going to have a good time with this game. I think so. Absolutely. I think they had this geared towards a, a very general audience. Definitely um, for people who are new to the Oculus. I, I would say, uh, kid, kids and adults. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, and this is especially good um, multiplayer game with uh, with friends. Great if you you're you're missing them and you want to you know do something fun and uh, definitely if you're having some uh, home alone issues. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's that's I, what's motivated us most. Uh, yeah, especially now. I mean, this sharing. last year has been real kind of tough. I'm a, I'm a, I'm the type of person. I need a lot of people around me. I like to have a big group of people and do a lot of stuff on a regular basis. Go out, have a good time. This has been kind of like 
a saving grace. I've been able to interact with a lot of people this way. A lot of fun on this game, too. This game was Is good. Is there any reason for me to hold on to the other controller? Not at all. I actually using one. I actually need it. I actually, when I play this, I set it down. Yep. Okay. Single controller on this yeah. one. Yeah, you can actually put one of the controllers down, so you can, you can have a drink in one hand if if you're skilled enough. Which this is this is kind of tough, it, the art of drinking something when you got this, the gar, the, this thing on your face. It's. You got this, Sean. Oh my goodness. Ah. Nice. Now I'm gonna go putt. Is that Diet Cola? Uh, are we new? <laughs> That's no Diet Cola, bro. <laughs> so this was interesting. This was fun. This was really cool. I this, hadn't really we hadn't really done this before. So the map, you hit you hit kind of like the the one of the one of the buttons on the controller you'll see in the game when you get in there. Mm -hmm. You can see it here. I'm kind of pointing out. Get that red line. I that's can kind actually of see like one of them there, there, but you can actually see the map. And the other see you as a giant head. Yeah, I think you can kind of like when we first started this little clip here, you can see those big, massive heads. And if you turn your head there, you've got the scorecard buttons for the menu. I, but you know I what like I thought this. was really funny, and I, I really hope this clip has got it, is you've got these really massive heads, and they, I mean they look like oh, we've got ninety that. feet know, tall. Oh yeah, we've got it. I know. Yeah. Okay. I, cool. I uh, we'll at. wait till we get there. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. But I thought yeah. this was really clever. This uh, you hit this button, you can see uh, with the map an overview of what's going on. You got the settings right next to you, and actually, and I didn't get a good clip of it, but if you turn the other way. Uh, they have a po like a kind of a postcard floating there showing the the controller configuration, like what buttons do what on the controller. So mm -hmm. I like that for use user interface. It was very accessible. I felt it was pretty easy to navigate your way and figure out what we needed to do. We didn't seem to have a lot of trouble with this one. No, this one was actually pretty easy to kind of maneuver through. <clears throat> Rob had a little bit of a problem now. Oh, even those are huge. <laughs> so you can, can see, see that there they've got the user yeah. interface to kind of tell you what to do with that but this is the part that i just cracked up over you can't really see what do you mean can you see me oh yes that's so funny you're waving <laughs> yeah hi maddie oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you so here i went back into the end of the level to kind of uh, go back and see what they were doing. We're going to show a little bit more of what was going on with that in another segment here. I played horribly. I've actually done okay with this game. But here's some highlights of me doing really bad. I'm now? Maybe because of the... See, uh... so it's the same thing. Back again. Oh, Maddie. It's just <laughs> not doing well. Wow. If you notice, you can put your club right through the rocks. Oh, oh man. Look at that. Barely missing. I had. This was just the. Such the worst. Get the game. Hole. Look at that. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Horrible. You're like, get it to the edge. Right to the edge. Get it in there. Yep. I'll get it to the edge. No, man. There you go. Little, little to the edge. Are you kidding me? See, I this really should have worked. You got gypped on that Look at that, that again. Oh, oh that should have worked. <laughs> me too. Number 10. And you can hear, you can hear my little dog toys in the yeah. background. See, that should have oh. worked too. Look at that. This is what I... But it was still fun. I still had a it good time. It was a time. great time. Absolutely. Because you know why? Because through that, even though I was doing terribly, I had I had my friends to make it even harder. 
Because <laughs> you can mess with your friends and do stuff like this. Like that. <laughs> I think we're even. <laughs> And see, we definitely did a lot of this. <laughs> in your home, that's your home. Go there. Oh, we had a great time doing this. I'm telling you, Rob, dude, you should have been there, bro. What's going on, man? Because you're that was you, so much fun. Your club, your golf club, doesn't actually mess with the other players. No, there's no interaction between like your club and their club. Even though you like, if you go to a, a real life mini golf course, you would absolutely be smacking up against his ball or his club or whatever. But with this, there's no interaction like that. You can goof off and play around. And, it was and fun. It, an interesting thing about this is, so one thing I always that gets me when I go to play mini golf, like actual mini golf. I'm I'm really tall, and they never really have golf clubs that are like my height. No, you got to almost bend in half in order to get that putter head down on the ground. It's pretty much one size. I, I mean, some places have two sizes. So even for kids, like some of them are probably too big. Well, sure. in, in this game, the putter will actually just automatically hit the ground. There's no like set length to it. It's almost like you have this magical, extendable putter. putter. It just it, it's it goes for like if Maddie is definitely a tall individual. I'm not very tall, but I'm you know average height. And if I was to use my putter and I handed it off to Maddie, there's no way he would be able to use it. So being able to have that magical lengthening of the club is pretty. Uh, pretty fantastic thankfully that's right the rob gets a really short and one anyway. this is what you were waiting for <laughs> what's funny is this is oh my god this is so funny the little golf club i get you your little your little peon i get you in the corner that club look like this big this little golf club i get you i get you with my golf club that is so funny. I love that it's just like one giant head, a hand, and there's this little tiny golf club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Go, go, go. Are you kidding me? And just stuff like that. Being able to see your friends reacting, you know, hearing yes. them is one thing, but like. Seeing the movements in the hands yes. and the heads going on. Yes. I mean, you know, regular online Bro. multiplayer games, I, we were going to switch them, weren't we? I mean, we could move Yeah, them. well, you know, it's too late into it anyway. You know, he, he's got a little bit of a funk going on, which is why we got the, the flies moving. But uh, sometimes them flies get away from them and they kind of move around. Yeah. That's all right. We'll, we'll keep going. We'll, go. well, we'll go. the Rob is our in-house expert on anything that really stinks. So... He's, he, he had nothing to do with this one. As bad as he is, he's he's still useful. So, you know, we we do what we can to uh, help him stay stay involved. We just pay him peanuts. That's right. But yeah, we had a good time with this one. This uh this and even this just this particular uh hole. We had some good times. When it's your turn, your golf club looks like a hot dog. <laughs> We were doing some other hot things dog, bro. With, uh, the, with, with this, but not showing it here. But we did have some fun uh, with some of the, the decor on that one, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I got distracted nice. by some of the decor. Um, there's definitely some exploring that you can do. Oh, yeah. Uh, walking around. Just kind of checking out, which is nice. I mean, it's, I think if you had larger groups uh, of people, you'd be waiting for your turn longer. So this is good; gives you a chance to just kind of wander kind of explore around. around and move around and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one thing that uh, Jen had noticed is 
depending on how well you do on each hole, the the response the game gives you is very different. Now, aside from just visual cues, there's clapping changes. Very nice. I like how Betty. this game makes you feel horrible because it's like the clapping <laughs> is different yes. depending on how you do. So when you're doing <laughs> yeah. the yeah. They do you the get like a little, little yeah. golf clap, yeah. Yep. But if you get like an albatross or like a hole in one, it's like, hey, hey, you know, big cheers and fireworks. Yeah. Bogey. Mm. Golf clap. Yep. Golf clap. Hey, par. Woohoo. Good job, buddy. Birdie. Nice job. Yep. You get fireworks. An eagle. I got me one of them eagles. Now you can hear that cheering going on in the back there. Yep. Oh, nice. And hole in one. Jen gets a hole in one. That was awesome. So, it's it, the rewards change depending on how good you do, and yeah, yeah when absolutely. you don't do that well, it's it does feel like they're just kind of like that. Yes, which good which, job you. As long succeeded. as you don't take it too seriously, it can add to the fun. Now, a Just little, a little bit, bit about, yeah. about the ball hunt. Oh, this yeah. is so cool. Follow my stream. So every every hole has a ball just laying around that you can pick up. So you can choose which ball that you're using for the game. It's just kind of a little yeah. side activity, which right. adds some interest. And when, when you're looking at the scorecard of how you're doing, it'll actually show a little check mark underneath each each column. It'll, that'll let you know that, you hey, found. I've gotten this ball on this lost ball on this hole or not. If you don't see a check mark underneath that hole, you've missed it somewhere and you've got to go back and search for it. Absolutely. Yeah. I thought the physics of this were were pretty good. I think so. You know, <laughs> oh, it was I, kind of fun. I, you know, I thought it was pretty realistic being the the way you could bounce it off of different surfaces, and the the surfaces, as you can see in this map, at least they're angular and kind of jagged, which added to uh, added a little bit of uh, difficulty. Did you crack wind, bro? Oof. We might have to. Might have to take him outside or something. Yeah, Whew. I don't know. Yeah, it's, I can, I can smell it from here too. Yeah, it's pretty rough. But uh, yeah, you know what I like about this is like these harder surfaces that you got to play with. They are angular, and it, the physics are really good. You get to bounce it off of like a wall or a, a stair or a rock, and you know it bounces off in a in a pretty decent trajectory. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so multiplayer. Now this does have a single player component, so you can play through, uh, you know, all of these maps just by yourself, which mm -hmm. is is fun. Which I, I've I've done yeah. several times. Absolutely. Uh, but it does have a really strong multiplayer component. Very much. So, you know, here we go. We've got our one. You got our, your single player. We got a single player mode, but it also has up to, I can't remember if it's seven players or up to seven friends you're adding with you but I, I think it was seven friends it, but i don't have you're gonna be competitive friends. in the game anyway but i think you could carry on with seven i only i only i only have a few well i've got I, you so i don't have i'm good i got you i got you babe talking to the rob uh sure private party available as uh, i don't know if you saw in the video but yes we did set up a private party so yep. it was only the people that we knew that were sent the invite uh some games may not have this so i thought it was good to to show you now i haven't done the uh the just, you can play against a random person uh yeah i haven't done that yet i think you can i think I, you can just like I a quick match you and somebody else out in the world <clears throat> They're, maybe they're in Afghanistan or South America or Antarctica. So yeah, as you can see, you can choose quick match or private game. Looks like private ah, game is up, up to, to five. Okay, up to five. So 
I just found out that I've completely mislabeled this game with the Rob rating system, but that's what you get for listening. Look at him. You lying sacka. Oh, bro. Dude. How could you mislead him like that, bro? It says five right there. But Why did you, you write... have to understand? He went like this, and he's got seven fingers. Or I think he's got seven fingers. You got me. Him. Why? Did... I think he lost a few. Why did you write seven? Because he oh. has a hard time writing. I think. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah, he got problems. More than we know here. I'm just not talking. Bet you're short. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, can you I, hear me? I was sitting. I can. Checking to make sure that we can all hear yep. each other. Yeah. We just got into the room, making sure we can hear each other. And I think Jen was about to mention the, that she was first because she was first in the room, but she was also the one that created the room, I think. So that might have some kind of factor it to it as well. We don't know. That's We might need some help with that one. Maybe he has to play a few more games. That's right. The person hole. who's in the lead goes first. I, had, I did not know that. Yeah. It's your turn. The So whoever's in the lead... Seems to go first. You know what it, cracks me up about these changed, golf games, for though, you guys? is the person who wins the game of golf is the person who plays the least amount of golf. Hmm. What? what? Yeah, think what? about it. Guy who plays the least amount of golf is the guy who wins. <laughs> and what are our overall thoughts on this game? I really, really enjoy this game. This is a game, even though, like, Maddie and I have different schedules from time to time where I might have to go to work early, our regular jobs. We do this for fun because we really enjoy, you know, being out here and talking with folks and whatnot. But uh, we do have regular jobs. And sometimes our schedules don't exactly line up. So I can actually play this game just by myself. Or if Maddie and I have our schedules that kind of line up, maybe on a weekend or something, we can get together and play this game at the same time. I like the fact that you can play with one single player and you can play multiplayer. Yeah. Rob and I, on the other hand, we don't get to play a whole lot. I that wizard dude down there either, man. He, he magically, he just like taps his staff and like he gets 18. <laughs> he's done. He's like <laughs> out the door before I can even start playing. Duh. Well, don't you even talk to me about doors. I've been around since before there were doors. What is this VR crap anyway? What oh, do you know? Geez. Bro. Dude, we're broadcasting. I told you not to do that. Listen to Matty well, over there. I I found the game like it's it's a it's a low key, relaxing, like definitely great for the multiplayer component of it. Yep. Not diminishing its single player uh, fun, but it, this is definitely. I mean, anyone that's been mini golfing, you can now you can still do it with your uh, friends and family without uh, breaking quarantine, which is kind of nice. That is kind of nice. If you're kind of dying for a little bit of, even if it's fake contact, it's. It's not the At least real. It's something, and you, it's you're not the definitely real thing. getting some kind of like interaction with another human. Yeah, definitely it's, like that component. It's uh, it's it's pretty real, but the the, awesome. the maps are fun, uh, challenging. There's a lot of holes. Like it took us what thirty minutes, maybe forty five. Yeah, at least to... for this one was about thirty minutes. Uh, I know there's a few others that you and I have played before that probably took maybe twenty to twenty five minutes. I know one like the first one that probably take probably about the same time. Any so I want to say the average twenty to thirty minutes for our, uh, an entire eighteen holes. I mean, it was uh, the game totally was worth it to me for the cost. absolutely uh, comfort wise. I think this game was is probably one of the more comfortable ones. I know Jen had a few problems with it, 
Yeah, and uh, she's more susceptible to stuff, isn't she? A little bit more, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think overall, this one's this one's a good starter game for someone Very just much. just getting into VR on the Oculus Quest Two. I think this one's an easy one to easy one to start with, and it's pretty mild and it's fun. Rob had a good time with it. He, uh, yeah, I think he fell down a couple of times on. <laughs> I love that this guy. He just he he gets completely just goofy faced when he's drinking and just can't even articulate words. Just just, uh, I'm, I'm surprised he hasn't. He's one of my favorite guys, even though he smells like nobody's business. I know he knows he knows what stinks though. And this this game actually, I don't think there was anything that stunk about it. No, um, this was definitely a non stinker. I think the only down, uh, the only negative thing, I wouldn't even pin on the game itself. I think Sean mentioned uh, having the three of us together. It was a little, maybe a lower frame rate, which could. Yeah, prop- I think it did slow down just a little bit. Which could attribute to internet connection speed. We don't know. We don't know if it's. We don't want to blame the game for that. No, I think that definitely is not one of the game issues. I'm not even sure this game has any real issues other than like maybe the occasional frame rate problem where if you get a big group of people together, say five people into a private match, (laughs) that you're going to have some frame rate issues because people's internets are not all working at the same speed. Oh, and we've played some games and some other apps. played some others that have just had some real doozies of some issues. But this one was pretty solid. Yep. Through and through. Uh this one's this one's definitely worth it. It's it's fun. It's not an overwhelming experience like some where um it's it's really intensely cool for a brief period of time. Yeah. You know, it's mini golf. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's mini golf. It's but mini it, golf. But they did it well. They did a they did a darn good job and I give it a thumbs up. I definitely give it a thumbs up. Heck yeah. It's a lot of fun. Really enjoy it. That's right. Well, I think that's it for this episode. I think that's going to do it for us. Of uh, the Oculus Quest reviews on Walkabout Mini Golf. My name is Matt, joined here again by Wizard, The Rob, and Sean. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Y'all have a good night, and thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. See you next time.